Hi, everybody. It's still June 12, 2021. I played this video in my last video, and I'm going to play it again. Because I do not want critical race theory taught to my children in school does not mean that I'm a racist, damn it. <laughs> it actually, it does. It's just another example of Republicans turning kids into a wedge issue, just like their politically motivated attacks on transgender youth who just want to play sports. Because I do not want critical race theory taught to my children in school does not mean that I'm a racist, damn it. And then Joy Reid laughs, mocks her. Uh, yeah, it, it does mean you're a racist. And... I'll show this again. The Intercept. Parents, mostly white, have been storming school board meetings. And that is what mainstream media presents. You know, this uh, fight against critical race theory, this is how they present it. Like, it's mostly white parents that don't want, that don't want to even discuss race because it's just too uncomfortable and they don't want the honest history of the United States taught to their children. None of that is true. I'm going to play this video. I'll start here. It's funny. I guess, you know, these people just never, ever did any research to find out. You know how many black racists we have who don't want to have that uncomfortable conversation? Yeah, really, Joy, really. She must be paid well. So I guess, here, viral, viral video on an awful lot of mainstream media, not just in the United States, all over, viral. Not on Joy Reid's show, not on MSNBC, not on CNN, funny isn't it daddy teaches you you can be anything in this world that you want to be right don't daddy teach you that yeah and it doesn't matter if, if you're black or white or any color doesn't matter if you're black white brown yellow, yellow. right black. and and how we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are and if they're nice and smart see this is how this is how children think right here critical race theory wants to end that not with my children. It's not going to happen. My baby's going to know that no matter what she wants to be in life, all she has to do is work hard, and she can become that. Work hard even though you don't know anyone. You can make friends. <laughs> yeah, you can make friends, no matter what color they are. So we need to stop CRT, period, point blank. Children do not see skin color, man. They love everybody. If they're good people, they love them. We pray for people that are hurt. Okay. Daddy teaches you. I'm just going to go through some videos of black parents not too happy about critical race theory. CRT is not an honest dialogue. It is a tactic that was used by Hitler and the Ku Klux Klan on slavery very many years ago to dumb down my ancestors so we could not think for ourselves. CRT is racist. It is abusive. It discriminates against one's color. Let me educate you. An honest dialogue does not impress, oppress. An honest dialogue does not implement hatred or injustice. It's to communicate with deceiving, without deceiving people. Today, we don't need your agreement. We want action in the backbone for what we ask for today, to ban CRT. We don't want your political advertisement to divide our children or belittle them. Think twice before you indoctrinate such racist theories. You cannot tell me what is or is not racist. Look at me. I had to come down here today to tell you to your face that we are coming together and we are strong. This will not be the last. Greet and meet respectfully. That's an angry Yes, it's an angry mother there speaking to a Virginia school board about the dangers of enforcing the critical race curriculum. Let's see. Kristen Gladhill. Kristen Gladhill. Amanda Ballard.
Okay, I am Amanda Ballard, and I live in Haymarket. Um, I agree with the proposal stating that Prince William County is committed to inclusive practices to promote excellence for all. I'd like to clarify a couple of the points before it is voted on. Primarily, I'm concerned that it is a nice way of saying or a nice segue in to having critical race theory taught to our children. One of my concerns with this term is that we will use terms like white privilege and systemic racism. My concern with these terms is that I've worked hard to teach my young children that the privileges they have are built off hard work and, um, sorry, that are built off hard work and character. We teach our kids that they aren't going to make it in life or that they will be held back because of the color of their skin is detrimental. I don't want my kids to go through life with pre-made assumptions based off of what somebody in school taught them about what other people might think about them. I don't want them to go through life with an artificial weight dragging them down and that they feel that they feel has been placed on their heads by default because of the color of their skin. Teaching other kids that they're better positioned in life because of that kid's skin or their kid's skin will perpetuate stereotypes that highlight our differences and minimize what we have in common. I fear it causes exactly what we are trying to prevent. I fear that it will make kids either view themselves as being disadvantaged or underprivileged because of the color of their skin. I also fear that other people will view them through the same filter. Instead of feeling included, they will feel different. I don't want people to look at me or my kids differently because of the color of our skin. I personally felt much more comfortable in my skin before we started emphasizing that I was right, that I was different. As a mixed race African American, I've had many more negative interactions with people from both sides of the color spectrum since last summer when we started f emphasizing it. There are issues that need to be addressed and I think that we need to be careful that the way that we address them does not create more divide than it does healing. As you vote, realize each one of those statements open up many other doors to what is being taught to our children. I'm asking that the statement be revised before approved to remove politically and societal divisive terms, specifically systemic racism, which has already thank proven to be a flashpoint to ensure the tone and complete inclusion. The statement, reflect, the statement should reflect thank, inclusive thank practices, you, equality, and promote excellence for all. Yes, exactly right. I, I have thousands of people. I apologize. <clears throat> Good evening, welcome. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman and members of the board. Uh, my name is Joe Ordia. Uh, I reside at uh, 3343 South Meadow Circle in Powhatan. Uh, and I'm here tonight to speak, uh, speak about this critical race theory. But before I get into that, I want to share a story about my family. My, my father emigrated to the United States in the 1960s. Uh, he came from West Africa. He grew up in a village called Ekpoma uh, in Edo State, Nigeria. And although he didn't have much as a child, he excelled very well at academics. Uh, he graduated uh, his undergraduate degree from the University of Ibadan. And after that, he was able to come to the United States on a student visa for postgraduate work, first at Bates College. But later, he was accepted to Harvard Medical School, where later he would graduate as the first African-American neurosurgeon from Harvard Medical School. All right, good for him. And, and the reason that I say all this is this, is because America is not a fundamentally racist country. And when you travel the world, as I have, and you talk to people in Africa, in the Middle East, they all want to come here. White, black, brown, doesn't matter, because they know that in America, if you work hard, you can make something of yourself. You can build a life for yourself and your family. You can have success. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this teaching of this critical race theory, it is designed to divide and conquer us as a society. It teaches lies. It teaches lies to both black students and white students. It teaches black students that, regardless of whatever they do, that they can never compete and succeed on their laurels because they're always going to be fundamentally disadvantaged in the so-called white man's world. And it teaches white students that, regardless of the condition of their heart, they are always going to be evil and incurably racist because it's just baked in. Now, this, this is false, and it, and it really is, a, is a, perverse, a perverse ideology. You know, if you want to find real racism, why don't you look at the money behind this toxic Hollywood pop culture, manufactured uh, hip hop culture that our youth is being attacked with? Yeah. It is a psychological warfare attack on our youth. 
And that's where the real enemy is. You want to find racism? Look at the money behind Hollywood and the hip hop industry. Excuse no. me, sir. This is how, this is how it works. Excuse me, sir. Again, if you can't be quiet while someone is speaking at public comment so the board can hear them, you will need to be, um, you will be removed. Yeah, Please I'd like, go ahead. I'd like to reclaim, thank you. I'd like to reclaim about 15 seconds of time that I lost there. I'm just going to summarize it with this. I'm speaking for thousands of residents here that don't have a voice in the room tonight. We do not want the critical race theory taught in our public schools. Okay? I have thousands of people willing to vote board members in and out on this issue only, and we are paying attention. So as your constituents, as your bosses, I am directing you to not allow any more critical race theory in Powhatan schools. Thank you. Okay. This video is going viral as well. My name is Keisha King. I'm a mom of two, one who's in the Duval County public school system and one in private school thanks to school choice. I'm also a member of Moms for Liberty, uh, representing thousands of parents. Just coming off of May 31st, marking the 100 years of the Tulsa riots, it is sad that we are even contemplating something like critical race theory, where children will be separated by their skin color and deemed permanently oppressors or oppressed in 2021. That is not teaching the truth, unless you believe that whites are better than blacks. I have personally heard teachers teaching CRT, and we have had an assembly shut down because Duval County Public School System consultant thought it would be a great idea to separate students by race. This is unacceptable. CRT is not racial sensitivity or simply teaching unfavorable American history or teaching Jim Crow history. CRT is deeper and more dangerous than that. CRT and its outworking today is a teaching that there is a hierarchy in society where white, male, heterosexual, able-bodied able people are deemed the oppressor and anyone else outside of that uh, status is oppressed. That's why we see corporations like Coca-Cola asking their employees to be less white, which is ridiculous. I don't know about you, but telling my child or any child that they are in a permanent oppressed stat, uh, status in America because they are black is racist and saying that white people are automatically above me, my children or any child is racist as well. This is not something that we can stand for in our country. And don't take it from me, look at the writers of these types of uh, publications. Our ancestors, white, black and others hung, bled and died right alongside each other to push America towards that more perfect union. If this continues, we will look back and be responsible for the dismantling of the greatest country in the world by reverting to teaching hate and that race is a determining factor on where your destiny lies. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> oh, wow. What do you say to that? Wow. So, I'd like you to listen to this, too. Now, this is Robin D'Angelo, the author of White fragility and I agree with everything that I and Hiresi Ali I'm sorry if I've pronounced your name wrong I agree with everything that she's saying uh, you know, it's so hard for me to do these videos at this point because it's so obvious and you know look if you want to take um, this woman's word for it, that those who oppose critical race theory, they're racists, you haven't looked into what critical race theory is. And I hope you do. I really hope you do. Oh, and the first woman who's speaking is Megan Kelly, who took her kids out of school in Manhattan because of what they are teaching, critical race theory. So disempowering. I, you know, that moron Robin D'Angelo, whose teachings are trickling yeah. into, the, into this K-12 education, wants me, every time I see you, to start with, yeah. Ayan, let me apologize <laughs> for my people, my race, myself, yeah. Yeah. and promise you I'll spend the rest of my life trying to make it up to you. You would laugh in my face, justifiably. So I'm... I'm challenging her to a debate. Um, I've been asked by an Australian media group who say, you know, they want us to have conversations about the people we disagree with the most. 
Um, I disagree with her, obviously. I think that uh, her work is... Uh, I don't even... I'm not even sure that it's coming from a good place because for a while we've been saying we think that these people have good intentions. It's just that they express them in the wrong way. And the proposed remedies lead to more antagonism and more hostility. But I'm not even sure that this is coming from a good place. I was preparing for that uh, for that challenge and started to read her book and look at some of her videos. And this is just a theology. It is... Mm. It, it, it's so terrible. I mean, so she has the title professor. She's actually teaching uh, at universities and is being ex- ideas are being exposed to young, impressionable people. And I think, gosh, this is wrong. She is saying no single, what all white people, with absolutely no exception, all white people are racist. And then she goes on to say very clearly that racism cannot be defined and should not be defined as an individual intentional act. And she's saying it's in, in structures and systems and it's in our culture. And so as a white person, you are condemned. And if you say, I'm not a racist, which is the natural reaction, uh, then she'll say you're fragile. Right. And that, that fragility, your defensiveness is actually, you know, it's, it's, it's keeping the system up. It's absurd. It's awful. And if she agrees to debate you, there isn't a soul in this country who wouldn't want to see that. I certainly would love to see it. And it's not from a good place. It is not from a good place. And when you, yeah, there's no intellectual honesty. There's no, there's no evidence in her book, White Fragility, that every white person is a racist, and if you claim that you're not a racist, well, that's a sign that you are a racist. No evidence, nothing, zip. And yet, White Fragility has been on the uh, New York Times bestseller list for a long time. Okay, what we do have is systemic corruption and they'll put that book on the bestsellers list, even though it may not be a bestseller. So we have a very big problem here in our country. This is, okay. I've posted this video, the Beechwood Board of Education, on my, uh, this meeting, on my channel before. Black mother, very upset about critical race theory. And I, here is a, well, if it ever changes, uh, hopefully it will, another black parent at this board who is against critical race theory. Right here. I will link below. I will link below. But if anybody could claim that this is not doing damage, Pizza Hut sponsored this uh, this seminar or meeting on critical race theory. So if you don't, <laughs> I mean, we have corporations sponsoring critical race theory. That should tell everybody that there is an agenda here. But if you listen to these children, you will see the indoctrination, the programming, and they are, unfortunately, these children will grow up to be a adults believing what they're being taught. This is not good. Okay, and in the very beginning, this man, I guess, works for Pizza Hut, and he's very proud to support, well, listen to the first child. Let me say at the outset, um, as Pizza Hut, we are so proud to support this work. If a white person kills a black person, person is they call it self-defense but if a black person kills a white person it says murder mm. that's, that's 
that's how unfair like black people's life is. There's value and there's justice in that. And we do it with intentionality. We do it with authenticity and we do it with, with humility. And we'll stand on the principles and the platform of anti-racism. And we have this thesis that when market actors lead with moral clarity, it can make a difference. What is the dominant culture? What does the dominant culture do? They like, make people believe certain stereotypes about a certain group of people, not just um, blacks, but also um, browns or um, indigenous. Um, anybody whose skin color is um, darker. Well, today, we're marking a new chapter in our deep commitment to literacy. And we're doing work that sits right at the intersection of equity and education. And we couldn't be prouder to do it in this space with American University, but also with a phenomenal partner uh, like First Books. Dominant culture is for powerful people with power and white people make other people think that black people are bad. So that's why black people don't have power. What we're hoping we get a chance to do is to really start answering one of the most important questions of our time. How do we make racial equity real in the classroom. Selfish men have created unjust, racist laws. And more people are activated and prepared to engage this work in the, in, through the lens of equity. And I'll just say that this is personal to me. What did we just learn here? Prejudice um, has been used as a tool for these greedy men to protect their stuff. To better understand and to undo systemic racism. And to support this journey, as you've mentioned, First Book and Pizza Hut have joined together to launch this unprecedented partnership. This work, like, needs to start young. And our network now numbers more than 475,000 members. And those are educators working with kids in need, ages 0 to 18, in schools and programs all across this country. This is what Pizza Hut said. We are in. I don't even know what to say to that. I, I just, I don't know how to address these people. I don't know. It, 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 it's just not real. It, like that uh, black parent speaking up and he said they're teaching kids lies. That's exactly what they're doing. Now, <laughs> It's pre-K, elementary school, right on up to college. How is it to know that, that you're walking around with that kind of benefit, that kind of affirmative action? Well, like, I don't want to, I mean, like, I guess this could be all tied into, like, the idea of, like, white privilege and everything. And I guess it's just, like, I mean, like, I don't think it should be true. Like, it's kind of, it's crazy. Like, I don't know, I don't really know what to think of it, but, like, it just, it is what it, like, I don't know. I don't want to say it is what it is, but, like, it doesn't seem like the statistic, like, it's not changing. Like, you, like it's, I don't know. So it's, conf it's confusing. Yeah, it's confusing. I don't, yeah. It shouldn't be that way. Yeah. And yet it is that way. Yeah. It's, and yet you're, wa you're going to, when you get your degree, when they hang you your degree, Bro, here's Tim. Here's your Timothy. What's your last name? Imer. Imer. So they're going to call your name out, and you're going to walk across the stage, and it's going to be Timothy Imer. And you're going to walk across the stage, and you're going to shake a hand. Here, you take that. You're going to shake the hand, and then you're going to get the degree, and you're going to like, yeah. And your parents are going to cheer or whatever. And you're going to have this degree. And you're going to think, oh, yeah, I fully earned the degree. I got it. And I deserve this. And I deserve everything that comes to it. Yeah, well, you know what? What's your last name, bro? Davis. Davis? My, dude, Miles Davis? Oh. <laughs> Same thing. Miles Davis. Davis and Miles is going to walk across the stage and he's going to have the same thing. He's going to get the degree and shake a hand and go like, yeah, and his family's going to cheer. And everyone's going to be like, you're going to be at graduation and you're going to assume that these two guys are equal and they're fucking not equal. It's not, we are not there, my friends. We are not there. I guess we're not there according to this, what, he, he has the title of professor. Uh, we are there 
in terms of a whole lot of individuals. We are there when I see these two walking across the stage. Don't tell me we are not there. Maybe you are not there, and you need to look inside yourself and do the work necessary to rid yourself of the disease of racism. But to claim, you know, in front of an audience of impressionable minds, we are not there, these two are not equal, is abuse. It's abuse. It's abuse. So, you know, I want to, I, I really feel like crying. I'm so worn down by all of this, worn down by watching people so divided and not listening to one another. So Christopher Rufo has been doing an awful lot of research and as far as I'm concerned, if you want to learn about critical race theory, you go to Christopher Rufo's website. He has written incredible articles on critical race theory in many schools across the nation, as well as our federal government and the agencies that are demanding demanding their uh, white employees go to these workshops, demanding that they admit that they are racist. You know, I feel like we came a long way in our country in terms of the race issue in a rather short period of time. Certainly my lifetime, wow, a whole lot of progress had been made. I feel like we are truly, uh, it, the speed with which we're going backwards is really, it's just overwhelming. So Joy Reid, this woman, Joy Reid, tweeted the answer to Mark's question is no none of these people who have made attacking critical race theory their life's work have any idea what critical race theory is none none of these people okay uh, his question He's interviewing somebody, and he asks, you know, what books have you read on critical race theory or, or... Okay. Well, Christopher Rufo saw this tweet, and he tweets to Joy and pro-democracy read, I will debate you. I will debate you. Joy, let's put your claim to the test. I will happily come on your show and debate critical race theory with you. Well, that won't happen. She will ignore Christopher Rufo, as mainstream media does, except for Fox News. Right, okay. That puts it in the left-right paradigm. Um, and a whole lot of people who don't know what critical race theory is, who are on the left, then they find out that, oh, Christopher Rufo, he was on Fox. Ugh. Well, that in itself is... It's, speaks volumes it doesn't it doesn't I wish people would get out of that dichotomous thinking so will Joy Reid accept his challenge no you know um, will oh boy Robin D'Angelo accept Ion's uh, Ali's challenge no why don't they debate? Why, why don't they accept? Other people have put out, I'll debate you, I will. No, they ignore them. Why? Because they know that they will <laughs> certainly lose face. They will be incredibly humiliated. 
because they cannot, they're not standing on firm ground. There is no evidence. They're just putting out lies. Why would you want to debate somebody if that's the foundation of your work? It's a lie. You don't want to. You just want to keep going on those shows that support the agenda that you're pushing. So this uh, critical race theory briefing book that Christopher Rufo just recently posted on his site uh, gives you a good background on critical race theory. And I'm not going to read all of it. It's, it's race essentialism. It reduces individuals to blackness and whiteness, then loads those categories with value connotations. Positive traits are attributed to blackness. Negative traits are attributed to whiteness. And it erases individuality. These kids don't have a chance to be individuals. Not with critical race theory. All whites are racist. Um, they argue explicitly that all white people are racist and perpetrate systems of white supremacy and systemic racism. And you can't escape this. That's it. This is a permanent box they're putting everybody in. Just like you heard from those parents. The permanence of, uh, well, you know, what's also obvious is that they're also saying black children can't make it on their own. Standards are being reduced, by the way, because, well, they have to achieve an equitable outcome. Equity, not equality. So how did they get that outcome? By reducing all standards. They're getting rid of advanced uh, classes. Harvard got rid of SAT scores. Why? Oh, because black children just don't have what it takes? I beg to differ with you. Robin D'Angelo, white identity is inherently racist. White people do not exist outside the system of white supremacy. And America is a fundamentally racist nation. Okay, collective guilt. Every, every, look, they're doing this to children. This is abuse. They're telling white kids that they're responsible. They're responsible for uh, this racism. How could anybody possibly think that this is okay? They don't want equality under the law. They're going for equity, which is an outcome. And anybody who can say that that is just a-okay, I guess are people who don't want to work, want virtually everything handed to them. Opposition to meritocracy. No, merit, working hard, and you know, having um, some accolades for your achievement, no longer. No longer. So there's an awful lot. You can click on the link below. They also want to, yeah, they say that um, in order to get rid of racism, you have to get rid of white people. The eradication, the elimination of white people. So, those who are listening to this mainstream media crap, these lies, not looking into what critical race theory is really all about, you better start. So, I will also link below to, well, I'll try to link below to everything and if I have room, I'll be able to do it, but, you know, is it just black parents? Uh, are we putting it in that divide, white, black? 
because an awful lot of those from China oppose critical race theory. An awful lot of Hispanic parents oppose critical race theory. Uh, this woman grew up under Mao, and this woman grew up under Mao. And they escaped the communism in China, came to the United States, and now are speaking out against critical race theory because they see the similarities between how uh, what their school curriculum was and critical race theory. Just switch, you know, class for race. Yeah, you know, Thomas Sowell, black American scholar, it is usually futile to try to talk facts and analysis to people who are enjoying a sense of moral superiority in their ignorance. Right here. But it's not ignorance. Joy Reid knows exactly what she's doing. Pushing a very dangerous agenda upon us all. So, Thomas Sowell, you know, it's time that people stop listening to the Robin D'Angelo's and the Ibrin uh, Kendi's who are pushing critical race theory and start listening to the scholars debunking crit crit critical race theory, Thomas Sowell, and the uh, Glenn Lowry, John McMorder, and Dr. Carol Swain, whose uh, channel is Dr. Carol M. Swain, Be the People of News. Here she's interviewing Chad Jackson, uh, producer of the film Uncle Tom, which you should, if you've not seen it, you should see it. And they're coming out with a sequel, Critical Race Theory. Both are against it. Dr. Carol Swain has been fighting critical race theory for a very long time, and a whole lot of parents, too. Bob Woodson says that critical race theory is detrimental to the black community, and he's exactly right. Ben Carson, against critical race theory. I listened to this yesterday, and I have to say it was very interesting with Dr. Carol Swain. And I don't know why this is not moving along, but it's not. What so, um, Vody, uh, Vody Bachman, Critical Race Theory, The Fault Lines of Social Justice. He has just written a book. He talking about how racist critical race, uh, critical race theory is. And there's an awful lot of black Americans on YouTube, and they are against bl uh, critical race theory, discussing critical race theory and wokeness with Christian Watson. And also, you know, this video is going on too long again. But you want to hear Obama? <laughs> I can't, you know. Nation ...that is witnessing a changing America. I'm sorry, I screwed up. Hold on. And here he is talking about a white population. Again, he, he should just be sitting with Joy Reid. A white population that is witnessing a changing America and seeing uh, demographic changes. And and do everything they can to give people a sense that um, uh, their way of life is threatened and that people are trying to take advantage of them. And we're seeing it right now, right, where, lo and behold, the, the single most uh, important issue to them apparently right now is critical race theory. Who knew that that, <laughs> that was the threat to our republic? But those debates uh, uh, are powerful because they get at uh, what story do we tell about ourselves? Population. Yeah. We're such a racist nation that we actually elected this guy twice. Now we know that they're not elected, but twice. We still have people swooning 
white people swooning at his feet. I guess he doesn't know about all of the black Americans against critical race theory. And yeah, who knew critical race theory would be the biggest threat? It is. It is a huge threat because it's Marxism. And if you want to pull you know, black children down, all children down, uh, all minority children down, this is a great way to do it. Tell them that they are oppressed for life. And they won't amount to anything because the white, their white peers, as they grow up to be adults, those white peers are going to make sure that they don't succeed. You know, we are truly in a really bad place here in our country. It's unfortunate that people still listen to him. It's unfortunate that people listen to her. And fortunately, there are people who counter what this guy just said, what you just heard. He's the last person on earth that should be promoting the critical race theory. Here's a man, if he's oppressed, he became president of the United States. When you promote a theory of hate that specifically targets a particular group of people, i.e. being white, that is the discussion and affects every American in this country. Who in this world oppressed President Obama? He became president. It makes no sense for him to carry the water supporting the critical race theory. So you're saying... The obviousness, it, it, that, that's what is, that is what I've always had problems, you know, countering. Uh, when it's so obvious and in your face and it goes over people's heads, what do you do with that? Um, so, yes, you know, systemically racist country, fundamentally racist country. If that were true, we would not have all of those scholars, Glenn Lowry, John McWhorter, Thomas Sowell. Um, we would not have a Candace Owens. We would not have an awful lot. You know, here are more uh, people on YouTube. This is why I hate critical race theory. Uh, rescued from the grips of critical race theory. Black liberal versus black right winger. The critical race theory debate. She's against critical race theory. And, you know, you can subscribe to Campus Reform and listen. Um, they put out a lot of very good videos and I guess I'll play this out it's four minutes which means my video just goes longer and longer but I'll end it with this no I mean obviously you should be aware of race I screwed up again hang on form today we're at George Washington University talking with students about critical race theory do students know what it is, and will they agree with three of the most basic principles of critical race theory? Plus, do they think we should be teaching this in our schools? Let's find out. Do you guys know what critical race theory is? Uh, no, we're not quite sure. No? No, same. I don't. Uh, no, not exactly. I do not. No, I don't. I don't. I think I have a decent idea about it, but honestly, I can't say I'm an expert on the subject. So I'm going to read you a series of statements that kind of explains the basis of critical race theory. And then for each statement, I want you to tell me if you agree or disagree with it. So the first statement is, the most important thing about you is your race. Do you agree or disagree with that? Uh, disagree. Disagree, yeah. Disagree. Disagree as well. I disagree. Um, I just feel like there's a lot to everybody and race isn't. Race is a very important thing, but it's not the only important thing. There's more to a person than the race that is constructed by society. I mean, people can view themselves differently. It doesn't have to be, just don't agree with that. 
I disagree. You know, I think every, there's so much more stuff that's more important, like your personality and how you are to other people. So the second one is race rather than merit should be the main factor in hiring decisions. Ooh, no, not the most important thing that people look at, uh, but ooh. I disagree. Um, I disagree. Yeah, I disagree because... Uh, that shouldn't be of any importance. No, I disagree. People people should be hired based on their skills because at the end of the day, the job that you do has nothing to do with the race that you're categorized in. And last statement is racism is in every single interaction that we have as Americans. Do you believe that? Uh, no, I don't believe that. Uh, I know it's very, it's very apparent and present in the United States, uh, but it's not in every single interaction. Uh, I don't know if I can say yes or no to that. Uh, I don't know if that's true necessarily. Do you think it's present in every single interaction? Um, no, not every single interaction, though. You know, knowing all of these things, knowing that these statements come from critical race theory, what if I were to tell you that all three of these statements are being taught to college kids, to kids in K through 12 in this country? Would you be surprised at this being taught? Yeah, I'm really surprised that it's being taught, and I don't think that's a good thing. Yeah, it is a little surprising because I feel like there's been a lot of reform in that realm, but yet the education systems aren't picking up on that. Do you think this is something we should be teaching our kids? Um, no, not necessarily. No, that I don't think I don't believe that should be taught. Just uh, it's not really a good way to think about things. You know, looking at Martin Luther King Jr., everything that he's done for this movement, he always said we shouldn't judge each other based on the color of one's skin. Um, do you think this is what he envisioned for America? No, I mean, obviously you should be aware of race, but if you fixate on it so much to the point that you see nothing else in the other human being, then obviously that counters, you know, the type of activism he's trying to do. No, definitely not. I think you want it um, a more, like, combined America and not, like, focus, like, focus on race is important, like, history-wise, but it should be more respectful and not, not separating people.